Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Alexandra Sikora. Alexandra, thank you so much for taking time to hang out with us today. How are you doing? Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here. I'm, I'm super excited because I wanted to be on your stream for such a long time. So I'm, I'm really excited that it's happening today. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm, I'm really pumped because we're touching something near and dear to my heart, which is plugging different services together in a way that is actually fun to work with. And, and uh, so before we talk about all that, let's talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with you and your work, do you want to give us a bit of a background? Uh, yes, I'm an open source developer at the Guild. I work primarily in the GraphQL space, um, but also on some other things like FETs that we're going to learn about today. And previously, I was working on a framework, Blitz.js, and I was also working on Hasura console at Hasura uh, before Blitz. So I have uh, a bit of full stack uh, developer background around TypeScript mostly. Nice, nice. Very cool. So, um... And, and so working with TypeScript, working with GraphQL, um, the, there's kind of a common theme there of, of trying to get data into a shape that is, I guess, pleasant to work with as a developer. Um, how did you, like, I guess, what was your path that got you to GraphQL? Like, how, why did you land on it as a, a focus area? So um, I started to working with GraphQL when I joined Hasura. Uh, I wasn't that familiar with GraphQL before joining, but uh, I think it was the time when it was uh, kind of more and more popular, mm -hmm. uh, like a few years ago. And uh, this is how I learned GraphQL. It sounds very, uh, you know, very compelling for me, like from the front end perspective to be able to, you know, uh, get all the data I want without the overfetching or underfetching problems. So uh, that was that was a huge deal for me. Then I kind of uh, stopped working uh, in the GraphQL space for a while. I uh, I went to RPC, mm -hmm. um, a part of the API world, for uh, I think almost two years, and now I'm back. Um, and I think there are still like amazing things to do in the GraphQL space. Uh, especially regarding type safety. I was mostly working on the GraphQL code generator. Uh, so like this thing that gives you type safety for your, uh, for your consumer uh, side of the, of the project. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's actually kind of, I'm, I, I don't want to over-focus on this, but I, I'm always really curious about um, with something like GraphQL, I think there was this mm -hmm. huge hype early on. Um, what was it, 2017, 2018, where yeah. GraphQL mm -hmm. sort of had this this massive wave of popularity and it was kind of being touted as the future. Um, and we saw a lot of companies get built up around GraphQL, uh, most notably was Apollo, right? And so Apollo kind of became the, mm -hmm. the center of the GraphQL universe for for a certain value of, of center. Um, and then we've sort of seen like this shift back toward like people are doing REST APIs, we're looking at TRPC, we've got these these sort of, uh, well, you don't need GraphQL, you just need type safety in your your fetch calls. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like you're you're kind of living in both worlds. You're you're looking at the yeah. the sort of TRPC space, you're you're looking at or at the RPC space, not just TRPC. Um, and you're looking at at GraphQL and you're working with a lot of TypeScript. So how how do you see GraphQL having settled into the landscape? So it's it's hype. I would say its hype peak is over, mm -hmm. and it's it's sort of reached the level of being a tool now. Um, how do you feel it it fits in, and like where is GraphQL really useful in a, a dev stack? Uh, so uh, where does it fit? So I think that you know comparing like RPC and GraphQL and REST. Uh, kind of doesn't make sense, like, you know, in general to just talk it about it, like, you know, in this abstract way, it all depends like in the, con uh, like of the context, it mm -hmm. depends on the team of the people who are going to work on those APIs on the project, uh, where we're going to use those APIs. So, um, I think there's, uh, a, a really huge use case for GraphQL in, uh, like, like companies that want to have like maybe public APIs or maybe they have like separate clients and uh, they um, 
the clients deal with extracting a lot of data and where, for example, TRPC uh, is really great is for uh, rather like smaller to business, uh, smaller to medium uh, applications mm -hmm. where like the speed of development is crucial mm -hmm. and where, uh, you know, coupling server and client isn't an issue. Like we want to ship fast. We are working, for example, on a SaaS application. We want to be able to like create backend along with writing frontend for, for the speed. And um, that is very compelling and that gives you tons of benefits, but it can also be limiting. Like, you know, when your backend grows, then uh, maybe you want a separate team or right. maybe you want a separate client to access your backend. Like maybe now you have a mobile app or maybe you have another app. So now you face a problem of exposing this, uh, mm -hmm. this backend API to, to multiple clients. So then we maybe we want to like uh revisit like whether graphql or rest could be a better idea for that and it's not like uh those things are not possible with therapy c like everything is possible uh but it's like some tools make some things easier than other tools right yeah i mean everything is a tool and you got to look at the problem you're trying to solve uh or you're going to end up you know d trying to force a tool to do something that it's not built for mm -hmm. um no, I love that. Okay, so all of that, I think, is good foundation to then introduce the the central topic of our show today, which is mm -hmm. FETs, uh, which, did I pronounce that properly? It's, yeah, yeah, I saw a question from someone, how to yeah. pronounce it. Yeah, uh, it's FETs, uh, the name is from Fetch and TypeScript. Mm -hmm. So like, if ATS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So at a high level, what is FETs? Uh, yes, so FETS uh, is something that uh, aims to bring type safety and to end type safety for REST APIs. Uh, okay. Because let's say we ended up with working with a REST API. Maybe we are creating a new REST API. Mm -hmm. Maybe we uh, already have a backend uh, that created the REST API. Or maybe we are dealing with some legacy rest api then uh how do we have the type safety on the on the like consumer part or on the on the client like um we still want we don't want to like go to the documentation every single time and we want to kind of like to have some guarantees about the apis at the build time mm -hmm. we want typescript to tell us oh this is the wrong usage of api so we have two options we can manually type it we can manually type all the responses and uh, and the uh, request parameters how how the how those objects should look like, or maybe we can generate it from the Open API spec. And uh, you know, as you can guess, with typing it manually, it can be you know a lot of work. Right. It can also get out of date, and you. Like, again, you have to look at the documentation, like you have to have it in front of you and then just, you know, basically write it down on your uh, on your uh, uh, machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the code generation, this is like an additional step. Right. Uh, you have to, you know, add it to your CI or to your like, you know, the, the, the development process. So uh, with FETS, we wanted to solve this problem. And we wanted to give you something that automatically infers the type from the uh, specification of your REST API mm. without any manual typing, without any code generation. FETS takes the type of your uh, open API spec and then infers what are all the endpoints, what are the uh, like body parameters types, or what are the response types. Got it. Okay. Cool. And this is, uh, th this is something that I think is, is very like relevant to my interest. Cause I know my, one of my first use cases for GraphQL is when I was at IBM and the way that we were trying to use it was as a, a normalization layer over a bunch of backend APIs that they didn't know how to communicate to the other teams. There were dozens of teams, right? And so they didn't know who needed to be updated, who was using the data. So we added GraphQL as this middle tier to normalize access. And the way that we had to do that is, you're gonna laugh, I had to call each of these APIs and see what the response was and make sure that that response matched what we had written in the GraphQL schema. 
so that we, it was just this very uh -huh. okay. continuous <laughs> manual triage of making sure that the types lined up because we didn't have any way to automate this. Mm -hmm. Like there, there wasn't, um, there wasn't a code gen step. There wasn't, and this was early days of GraphQL before any of the tooling mm -hmm. was even built around it. Right. So I was hand rolling resolvers to make this work. So this is a very welcome space for me to hear that, that people are focused on because, you know, we, we all like to think about tools in the greenfield state. Like, well, sure, if I controlled mm -hmm. all the variables, then TRPC is wonderful. But in any any team of size, that's not the case. You you don't have access to the database and the, you know, the server and the front end and all of those things just to do whatever you want. You've got too many teams, too many people who need to depend on that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So this is exciting. So So to repeat it back to you to make sure I understand it, FETS is going to use the open API spec to automatically give me uh, type safety on the client side with, with any REST yes. API that has an open API spec. Yes, exactly. Without code generation and also your schema, like everything from this open API spec won't end up in your bundle size, mm. like what won't increase your bundle size because, um, because it's just types. So it's going to be stripped from the bundle. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, okay. So is there, do you have like a, there's a, this is the ideal use case. If somebody wants to start working with FETs, this, you know, if you, if you're looking at this, you should pick it up right now. Or is, are there mm -hmm. more like, is it more broad than that? So I have a few use cases that are interesting. And I, I would like to tell you first about the use case that I think inspired Arda from the guild who, who created FETs to, to work on that. Uh, it was when they were working with some clients and they were creating like a GraphQL servers, mm -hmm. uh, but they were writing resolvers and un un under the hood, there were like a bunch of REST APIs. Mm -hmm. So like in this middle layer, in this like backend for frontend part, uh, they needed some additional type safety. And this is when uh, when Arda came up with FETs. So this is one use case. We don't have to look at FETs from the like front-end perspective. Mm -hmm. It can also be like the middle layer. Maybe we can use it like to create our GraphQL reservoirs. Maybe we can uh, use it to create some SDKs mm -hmm. that then we're going to expose to to end users. So this is one uh, interesting use case. Another one that uh, is, is, is also very cool is that, for example, you are dealing with a legacy API. Mm -hmm. Like there is some REST API, they have the open API spec, but there's no SDK, or maybe there is, but it's outdated and uh, maybe it's, it's heavy, like bundle wise, sure. then you can take this open API spec and use it uh, on your, like on your client with uh, like, like easily, you can have all the type safety. Nice. And I think this is something that we're going to explore more later. And uh, another thing is, uh, it's also like slightly in the same space. Maybe you have existing REST service, like your, your backend uh, has the REST service and you want to, uh, like, like you want to have uh, type safety on, on the client. So this is also where FEDS uh, is really, really good at. And uh, I, I wanted to mention here that FETS is actually two parts. Okay. We have the client part and the server part. Uh, we're going to talk more today about the client part uh, because for me it's like the, the, uh, like the most exciting uh, thing about this project. But there's also a server that lets you create uh, REST APIs very easily. It's uh, kind of similar to TRPC. Like if you have experience with TRPC and uh, with uh, how you write the, 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 the uh, procedures, uh -huh. then it's kind of like similar developer experience. Uh, but it gives you like the, the open API spec out of the box. Oh. And then you can also easily use it with, uh, with the Fed's client. Very cool. Um, and so does that mean that that we can also use TRPC with FETs? Like if we had TRPC on the back end, we can use the FETs client on the front end to consume it? Uh, as long as you use this open API plugin for TRPC, then yes, you can use it with, with FETs. Very, very cool. Okay, so I, I have a million questions, but I, I have a feeling we're at the point where it's going to be easier to show me than tell me. <laughs> so why don't I switch us over into uh, into the pair programming mode? 
And here's the button for that. Okay. So, uh, all right. So this episode, like every episode, is being live captioned. We've got Amanda here from White Coat Captioning taking care of that for us. Thank you so much, Amanda. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify and Vetsu Code. Uh, thank you very much for uh, so, you know supporting the show. And we today are talking to Alexandra. Is this the right place to send people? I don't know if Twitter's the right place anymore. Like... Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, I mean, well, I, I try to switch to Blue Sky, but I'm not very consistent with that. And there's, I, I really, really wanted to use Threads, but it's not in Europe yet. Oh, so, really? I I, My, oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, the regulations. All right. So then I have the Thets project here. And so I'll drop a link to that. And okay, if I want to get started, what should I mm -hmm. do first? Okay, so I think we can go to the client uh, part of the docs. Okay. And here's this, uh, this quick start guide. And I was thinking that maybe we can create a small project. So uh, like, what's your favorite thing? What's your go-to thing when you're creating a new front-end project? Uh, uh, typically I'm using Astro, but I can, uh, I can mm -hmm. work with whatever we, whatever I, I, <laughs> I tend to get a lot of practice with front end <laughs> framework, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to do whatever. Okay. So I, I think maybe we can just go with Vit. Okay. Uh, it's, it's very minimal and, uh, we can, we can use this, I think react TypeScript template. Okay. Um, uh, we'll call this Vets V, uh, react. Okay, React. Yeah, someone pointed out that Astro is basically Vit, so we're kind of like going like this one layer down uh, to 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 having something like very very minimal. Nice. Okay, so I am installing, and then we can uh, let's open up the sidebar. Oh wait, no, let me actually open this project, and it's at GitHub here here. Okay, so this is our project. And I'm going to yes. get in it in here so that it stops hiding everything. Um, so we've got our standard like bare bones Vite setup. Uh, so we've got our basic app. Do you want me to leave any of this, or should I uh, strip it down to just like a hello world? Uh, we can leave. We can leave all of that. Uh, we're okay. gonna work with that uh, later. So maybe um, after you you have the dependencies installed, we can. Uh, at FETs to okay. the dependencies. All right, so that's where we started. That's what we're looking at right now. So I will mm -hmm. npm install FETs. Okay. Okay, awesome. So uh, if we go back to the docs um, and to look at the next steps of, uh, I really like that you're using Arc. It's my favorite browser. I do, I do like it. I seem to have cleared my window though. So okay, here we are. We're back at the we're back at the docs. Um, so I've I've yeah. installed okay. FETs. Yeah, and the first uh, first use case is, here is usage of existing REST API. So for that, what we're gonna need is the Open API spec. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking that we can build something with a Spotify. API. Mm -hmm. So uh, first thing we need to do is to find the uh, the Open API spec. Yeah, I hope this is the one. Okay, so this uh, is this is a uh, Spotify API, and let's see yeah. if we can find. I think if you Google um, if you Google Spotify Open API spec. Uh, let's yeah, see. let's open the, yeah, I think I was there under this link previously. And then you can, uh, somewhere at the bottom, there was a link. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep, this one. Here. Awesome. Okay. So uh, right now we have uh, we have the open API spec for Spotify, but it's in YAML. And mm -hmm. we would like JSON for TypeScript to to. Uh, work with the JSON object. So uh, you can copy it. And um, well, right now we can just use an arbitrary tool to uh, convert YAML to JSON, but we can uh, also 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, we can also already open the Swagger editor and um, yeah, it's a Swagger UI. Uh, yeah, I think let's go to the first one. And actually click on this uh, button in the uh, top uh, uh, right corner, this try new one. Yeah, it's uh, it has more options. Okay. So here you can paste the spec. And in the edit, uh, there is this edit button at the top. And you're going to see some options. And you can convert to JSON. So Magic. you can like, it's like two in one. You can convert it like from one format to another. And you can also like, you know, play with it, see uh, what, uh, what's inside. Very cool. OK, so uh, now we can take it, this uh, specification, go back to the editor. And uh, we can create a new file. Uh, it doesn't matter right now where the file is. Uh, let's call it OWASP or Open API Spec. Uh, open API Spec JSON. Um, uh, oh, no, actually, it's not JSON because currently TypeScript can't infer types uh, uh, that that will from like the, the JSON. We would like it to store as uh, uh, as an object. So uh, oh, let's gotcha. change it to a TypeScript file. Gotcha. OK, so let me get up to the top here. And then we're going to export, like export default, or? It can be default. It can be a, a const. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it can be like a default or a named export. Um, and what's also important here is that uh, at the end, we're going to add as const assertion so that TypeScript can narrow like the most specific type as possible. So it won't be just any object with like like some properties. It's going to be exactly uh, this. So let's see. I think my VS Code install is struggling a little bit because this is a pretty big file. You can't even. Can you save? Yeah. There you go. There okay. You go. <laughs> cool. That works. <laughs> uh, OK. OK, so uh, let's do this as const at the end of this uh, object. I think I yes, oh, yeah, you got it. I did it already. Yeah, that's awesome. OK, so now we can go. Um, we can write the code, like create this new client in the like the app entry point, or we can create a new file, maybe for the sake of you know having this uh, very, very clean, we can create a new file. Okay. Like let's call it client ts or that's client ts. Okay. Okay. And in here, um we're gonna import create client from fets. Got it. And also from fets, we're gonna import something called normalize o uh, OAS. Yeah, this is uh Got it. First one, the, the type. So what it's going to do, it's going to um, help the, the, the feds kind of figure out the types. It's going to like normalize some properties in the uh, in the open APA schema. OK, so right now let's do um, let's do const client. Yes, create client and we're going to also pass a generic uh, parameter to the uh, to the create client function. Uh, a gen oh, right, got it, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, TypeScript generic, yeah, here. And here we're going to use the normalize us. And inside, we're going to add uh, another generic parameter. And here we're going to do type of the, the open API schema object. Got it, OK. And that one we'll have to import. Yeah, yeah, Okay. exactly. Uh, so there are a bunch of config, config options, but what's like the, the, the like the most important uh, is providing an endpoint. So um, I think to see what the endpoint is exactly, we can go to the uh, to the specification, and it's gonna be there somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, this a uh, URL uh, line fourteen. Yep. Okay.
All right. Okay. Got an so endpoint? yeah, so we have the client. Um, we can like already play with it to see if uh, there are like the, the proper types. We can see what are the endpoints. Okay. Uh, maybe we can switch to the docs to see how to. I think there are nice examples there. Yeah, let's get here. Okay. So okay. So so you see that yeah, those are all like async functions. Uh, you basically use client, and then you select what endpoint you want to access, and then depending what are the available methods on this endpoint, like whether it's just get or maybe this endpoint has like get post uh, put delete, then mm -hmm. you're gonna have it available on that uh, object. Got it. Okay. Very cool. So so then in here, I can uh, get like. Is this going to work? Do I need to wrap this in a... Do we get top-level await in Vite? Go client, and then... Oh, it was here. Wait, is it a dot? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Here's all of our... This is so cool. Yep. And then you're going to also have, like, all the parameters typed properly. So, you know, TypeScript will tell you, oh, you didn't pass ID to this uh, endpoint that required an ID parameter. That's so cool. Okay. I love this. So we can get um, an artist ID, right? And mm -hmm. uh, a Spotify artist ID. I think you can, can you get those out of like Spotify itself? <laughs> Uh, well, I was I was trying to figure that out, and what I what I kind of figured out is when you uh, click like some share, um, yeah, there's copy link to yeah, and when you like in this link there should be Let's see, some kind of ID. That's a share thing, and this is the ID, so we can take this, yep. and then I need to. Oh wait, how does this work? I uh... Uh, okay, yeah. Now uh, it's I think it's a uh, get uh, yeah, and, and inside parameters. we pass an object. Okay, yeah. and we have params. Oops. Params. Oh, yeah, and, and it knows. The... Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah, it knows already everything. But what else it's going to need is an uh, API key, which I'm going to send to you to uh, save you from okay. you know, generating the open API key uh, okay. to help us move faster. Mm. So I will create a uh, .env because Vite will pick that up for us. And then yep. I'm going to go off screen here and we'll say uh, well it's gonna end up in the browser anyways and it's gonna be it's gonna expire in like 20 minutes or so, so. oh okay if it's if uh, if we're cool with sharing it then I can I can yeah. just do that um, yeah and also in the in uh, if you want uh, the 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 API uh, your n variables to end up in the browser you have to add this v like the v prefix yeah like v public uh, or something v underscore up uh, underscore and then your uh, like the name of the okay uh, variable so should I do, do you want me to put it in a in nver or how do you want to do this uh, yeah we can put it in the nver okay. Or we can just paste it directly in the file. But maybe we can put it in the nvar in case we want to reuse it. So you know, it's uh, okay. it's easier to copy paste the um, yeah. And now uh, we're gonna have headers here. Okay. Because also, I think TypeScript right now complains about the lack of headers. Yes. Because Spotify requires us to always send the authorization header. One of these in there, and then. It wants the authorization header, and we can go import meta and vite up Spotify API key is what I think I called it. Oh, I think it's uh, it's not up uh, like up, but like app. Oh, vite app app. Sorry, that's my yeah, yeah. my bad. <laughs> um, 
I was like, oh, I haven't seen this approach before. It's, be- it's because I was making things up in my <laughs> head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So I mean, we got a response. App, like, you know, UP also works because it's kind of like, you know, hey, take this upper <laughs> like to my browser. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. That was like what happened in my brain. I was yeah. like, oh, that makes sense. You're like leveling it up to the browser. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, so we've got I mean, a response. It makes more sense that the app. Uh, okay, so we have our call, and now, uh, well, what we and, want to do is probably. And I just mm-hmm. I just want to take a second to to just like, mm-hmm. I have not looked at the Spotify API, right? So I got that API spec, right, and then I have been able to, like, control space my way through this entire process, like. I found the the endpoints by looking at, I hit dot and it shows me all the endpoints. I hit this dot get and then it showed me the headers and parameters. It knew the ID, it knew the authorization. So I'm just auto completing my way through this entire dev process and I haven't had to really refer to the API docs at all. I'm just, I'm getting where I need to go. Yeah. This is really, really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is. And I think the hardest part here was to figure out was the artist ID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I go to Spotify and take it. Um, I yeah, just saw a note. Uh, I also wanted to mention that we forgot about it. Okay, so we have a response. We uh, we've I we caught this before it broke, so you know, give ourselves a little pat on the back there. <laughs> <laughs> and theoretically speaking, we yeah. should be looking at an artist once we once we like echo this out so should i just console log uh, it? well actually first we need to see if the response is uh okay so if okay. there weren't any errors so i think there's gonna be if a response uh there should be an okay literally property on the yeah okay and then, then we, can... we also not yet not yet oh not yet so we also want to do uh to 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 call like json on this response Mm-hmm. which is also going to be async. So let's maybe do const artist. Um, let's await and response JSON. Yeah. And this will give us our artist. Okay. And so we'll just dump an error if something goes wrong here. Yeah. Okay. So this should make it all work and i just realized we don't have any way to call this one so we can um uh yeah yeah but why don't basically we do this? if I'm we gonna... import the client in like the entry point oh yeah that could also work if we add it to the app tsx yeah so i'm just gonna import um... our client and then we can put all of this right here and it should work right do I need to put it inside yeah, the component? Yeah. That, that, this will work. Okay. So then if I go so, back out uh, to our app, yeah. check the console, and... Yeah, it worked Ta-da! on the first try. <laughs> this is pretty dang the cool. The scariest part is over. <laughs> All right. So let's let's try this. Let's just swap out the artist and show it again. Um mm-hmm. Everybody can judge me for what I like in my my Spotify. Uh, let's get one of these. And then we'll come back here. Oh, that's the wrong window. Um, let's see, ID goes there. And now we get Fleetwood Mac. Super cool. Amazing. That yeah. I that is definitely the like I have used the Spotify API before and that's the mm-hmm. fastest I've ever used it. So that I, I I'm think really glad. there's a there's a, a big vote of confidence for the fact that this is an API that I don't know. It's an API that mm-hmm. I didn't look at docs for, and I was still able to successfully make a call just kind of by intuiting my way through the autocomplete. I think that's a really good sign. Yeah that you've got a great tool on your hands. Yeah, you didn't even need me to help you with that. 
<laughs> you only need the TypeScript and the auto completion. <laughs> I, I, while I think that might be technically true, we would still certainly be uh, fumbling through it if I hadn't had, <laughs> if I hadn't had the the adult supervision there. Um, <laughs> But so, th I mean, this is yeah. great. Like th this is, this is really exciting, really cool stuff. Uh, and I feel like we're just barely scratching the surface. So what else, yep. what else can we do with this? Okay. So currently, like you, you see that we just, you know, added this code, like imperatively to our entry point. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can like build a s small UI and see how to use it, like in a real life example, yeah. like if you are actually building the app, uh, like the UI from the API. So uh, maybe like all of this code that you have, maybe we can put it in a function, like some kind of like fetch artist uh, okay. or something like that. And then we will we'll call it in the app. Okay, so we will do a fetch artist, we'll pass in an ID and that will be one of these, and then we'll return the artist. Yeah. Uh, I think we also need to add async or it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oops. A wink. Async. <laughs> OK, so we have our um, we have our async function. Let me make this a little bit. Oops, whoops, whoops. What am I doing? Make this a little bigger. And we've got a little function that we can call to fetch an artist. Mm -hmm. And then we will yeah. swap this out to be the ID. Yes. OK. And uh, Fetz is happy because the types match. And I'm glad because I guessed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So now down well, here. If you, even if you guessed like wrongly, then it would tell you right away what is the correct type. Oh, so. that's true. Watch. No, this should yell, right? It does. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. It's so I mean, good. there was this one second or two seconds when it didn't, and I was like, hmm, do we have a bug? <laughs> That's always the best moment, especially because my VS code is such a train wreck because I add new things to it every week. And mm -hmm. so I, like, every once in a while, it just won't do a thing. And it's like, huh, was that the, was that the software or is that that I've lit this computer on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have this problem that I usually have like 10 VS codes open. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes it's not the fastest. Okay. So we have the ability to fetch an artist. I have, I'm going to just make sure I don't lose that in my, my copy paste there. That's our, that one's Fleetwood Mac. And then I can grab a few others if we need them. Um, mm -hmm. And well, actually, you know what could be fun? is what if the thing we build here is uh, we can get a playlist and then show like the the image for each of those artists, you know, on a, yep. like, or yeah, I guess we can limit it to like 10 or something so it's not too over the top, but this is, mm -hmm. okay. I, it, like the fact that I just thought about that and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't wanna go figure out all those APIs. I'm like, no, no, no this will be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it will be very, very easy. You're gonna have like, you know, what's the the response, uh, like shape of the response right away. Yeah. So, uh, that's so we'll be able to be... like do a playlist, okay. right? And then I can come in yeah. here, and I can get playlists. So I just know to go down to my playlists, and I'll get an ID, and I want to get. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna give me an ID. And then this one doesn't match because this one is a playlist, playlist ID. ID. Easy peasy. All right. And so we'll make this one match. So now I've got a playlist ID and everything else just works. Um, we can rename these. So that yeah, and we can well. also, we, if the response is not okay, we can throw an error. Uh, so that we don't go to like this path of, uh, you know, calling the JSON on the response. Okay. So I'll throw an error instead of console logging an error. Hmm. Oh, it needs to be the message. Uh, uh, so we can do like the response dot text. I think it is status text, whatever. We just need something. Uh, can... Yeah. I think it's a, and that way we'll at least get some information if it goes wrong we and we can dig deeper 
Um, it won't go wrong, so yeah. <laughs> it's not going to break. <laughs> if um, it will, then it's going to be Spotify's fault. Not exactly. Ours. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, okay, so then what we can do is in here somewhere, I want to just make a list out of this. So we'll we'll get rid of these and we can say mm -hmm. like my playlist rules and then I want to like. Oh, you know what we can also do? There is this, uh, I think there's an iframe link in the responses. So we're gonna, we, we can also like put an iframe with the like preview from Spotify. Oh, cool. So someone can play it like right away in our application. Okay, so let's uh, add iframe and then we will uh, we'll just list artist images. Okay, so we can do we can do something like that, and like we could go further if we wanted, but I don't. I mm -hmm. you know, we'll we'll see. But so uh, then, if I want to do that, then I need my my playlist. So we would do. Um, do I want to do this as a like in a use effect or? Oh, so this is this is a question for me. So if you fetch an API, what do you usually go with? Like, do you use React Query or some other similar? Uh, if I'm things? using it in multiple places, I'll use React Query. Otherwise, I'll just use the Fetch API. Okay, then we can uh, we can have like use state with like the playlist. We can save it in the state, and then we can have use effect uh, to to call the okay. uh, to, uh, to like execute our Fetch um, playlist function. All right, so we will do a playlist is a set playlist, and then we'll use state, uh, and then we'll do a user. But if you would want to use React Query, it would also work very well with that. Just saying. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, I do. I mean, I I am a very big React Query fan. I think it is it's a a very well done mm. piece of software. Uh, let's do. So we'll do an async function. Um, that would be like a load playlist. Oh, so we don't need to create a new function here. We could just do a uh, fetch a playlist and then, and then we can also add catch. Oh, oh, right, right. Because you don't have to do everything as async await. You can just use, uh, you can just like, you know, use the, use the platform. Uh, so we'll, we'll come up with a, a an ID for that, but then we can dot then. And with this, that'll be our uh, playlist, which we can set playlist. And if something is wrong, we can uh, throw new error. Oops. Okay. So what are you unhappy about? Uh, yes, so, uh, I think I missed, uh, okay. I missed something. Yeah. So I think there are going to be a few issues. And the first one is that TypeScript is not happy that you assign this playlist to an array with, of never, because when you don't provide a type for the use state, uh, mm. I think it's, oh, uh, actually it's undefined because we don't have uh, an array here. Yeah, so we, we still need a type because right now it's going to be an array of uh, never. Okay. And we're going to pass a generic type to the use state function. And right now, so what is the type of the playlist? Like we could possibly do some kind of like type of uh, ret uh, like return type of uh, the fetch playlist function. Like we could do this on the TypeScript like with the TypeScript utility. Mm -hmm. But we can also uh, use FETs for that. So if you could go back to the docs for a second, because I'm not sure if I remember correctly uh, how this utility type is called. Here. OK, and now if we go to uh, the, uh, yes, inferring schema types. Okay. So we have a few uh, a few utility uh, types here. So we have models. Oh, and here we have response body. Uh, 
So we're going to go with the uh, OAS output. And based on the endpoint that we used, mm -hmm. uh, it will tell us what's the type of the playlist. Cool. Okay. So I go, let's see, we can do this side by side. Um, I want OAS output, which I need to import. Mm -hmm. And then that gets the normalize OAS. Yep. And then um, we do the type of Spotify. Mm -hmm. And then that. And then we also pass the, uh, the playlist. Is that right? And that is a get. Right? Okay. Is there something underlined uh, there. in the type? Only refers to a type, but it's being used as a value. What have I done? Uh... I think we are missing one, uh, one like the strangle bracket there, don't we? Or maybe uh, let's just copy paste from the docs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got this one. Mm -hmm. And so I need to grab this and put this here. And then this one is going to change to Spotify. Uh, yeah, and so at the end, we need on. one more. Uh, oh, yeah. And also at the variant or not? No, no, it's it was fine, right? Uh, let's see. One, two. Two, three. Yeah, we're a short one. Um... Okay, I have another idea. Let's create a new type. <laughs> Okay. Uh, type playlist. So we're going to say it in a different place. Okay. And then use this here. Yes. So it's, it's also going to be uh, shorter and then we can also use this type. Um, okay. So then we can do a playlist and we need the playlist ID without this. What don't you like? Playlists? Uh, yeah. What, you know what would Playlists, be smarter yeah. is just copy pasting that, but um, great. So <laughs> and we have a get. <laughs> so oh, it's a small a get. Case. Okay. Get or put. Oh, I made it smaller. I though. think it's just uh, your VS code is slow. We're good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, then the 200 and that does, it, I think it expects a string. Oh, got it. Okay. Then you become, okay. and now we playlist. can say playlist and it's, yeah, it's, it's a single playlist. It's not a list. Okay. Perfect. And now you're happy. Woo. We did it. Yes. Okay. I loved, I, I love TypeScript. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I get like I get it. I get how uh, y you know this is this is definitely the part that is I think the trickiest for me is when you start getting to the point where you're like, okay, mm -hmm. so I'm writing custom code based on a thing, and it's all figured out in the code, but I need to extract this return value out of somebody else's code so that I can then use it. Mm -hmm. Like it just yeah. gets very uh, there's a lot of a lot of like head bendy stuff that happens in there. Um, but we got there, and it ends up being a one liner, which is nice. So then, I guess it auto wrapped to being a five liner, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fine. <laughs> um, so now we should have a playlist if we go and get a valid playlist ID. So let me switch over mm -hmm. to uh, to here, and I'll go to playlists if I can find them. Um, how about this playlist? And then we can. Yes, I really like this one. You can share it, and here's the playlist ID. Okay, so then we'll drop that one in here, and we can get rid of this. All right, 
So first and foremost, maybe we just dump this and make sure that mm -hmm. it works. So we'll do yes. one of these, JSON stringify it, and playlist goes here. Okay. Okay. So that should, theoretically, do what we want. So let's give it a shot. Yes, it should. <laughs> and if I close this, look at it yep. go. It's not the prettiest website, but <laughs> we but did, it did get the what thing. we wanted. Like it did the yes. thing, and this is amazing. So so then once we get in here, we have um, we've got the playlist name, we've got the mm -hmm. uh, this is not formatted in a way that's easy to read, but We've got the tracks. I think there's some kind of like uh, like justify item center or align item center going on somewhere. I wonder if I just turn this off, if it'll fix all of these things for me. Oh, I need to wrap it in a th in Yeah, fragment. What are you doing? Stop with your helping, you. Okay, there we go. Now oh, yeah. It's now it's now it's doing what we want. So, too, too much CSS. <laughs> so we've got our tracks. The tracks have items. Uh, each of the items includes the the track name and the artists. And so it it will just be I guess grab the mm -hmm. first artist. Um, yes. And this even gives us the ID. So so theoretically speaking, we could. Uh, let's see. How what would the right way to do this be? Just from a software architecture standpoint, should we loop over these in the playlist to like get the details about the artist since we don't have an image, or do it out here? Well, if we don't care about any other data, we can uh, we can like filter it out earlier. So. Um, I would like leave the fetch playlist function as it is mm -hmm. because uh, you know we probably wanted to still like fetch the playlist, not modify the data. Mm -hmm. But we can we can filter it like we can update our uh, state variable to only store like not the whole playlist, but the things that we care about. Okay. Um, yeah. So what do we care about? We care about. Um, so let's think about like what we what we want. Um, we want the playlist name. We want mm -hmm. the tracks. And that would be an array of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then inside of that, we want um, probably the track name. Artist name and like an image or something, which would be a URL, I think. And then we wanted that that yep. iframe thing too. Where is, uh, where is that? I think there was something like external URL. Oh, this, this thing that I think the one that starts with open Spotify, I think that's the one that opens the iframe, but I'm not sure. I think we can try it out. So I think this one, yeah, let's let's see what happens. I think this one will attempt to open the app. Um, or... Okay, I think I know. There should be like an embed inside uh, the URL. Okay. Is there something like that? Let's see. Embed, hmm. iframe, preview, preview URL. Oh. Maybe this one. Is that for each track? Okay, so if I do one of these, then what does that do? Oh. Okay, so so that's uh, that's the preview URL, <laughs> but that's for yep. one song. Um, let's see. Um, Is there a? Hmm. Maybe that's something that uh, needs to be done with a little extra code. So maybe let's stick to displaying the data and maybe okay. uh, like adding a link to Spotify. Maybe we can add a link like, you know, go to Spotify, like open in Spotify 
Okay. based on this uh this this url with like this open.spotify.com great okay that works so so this is this should be enough for us to uh, i guess we can do a link to the song also um okay any any other data that we want i don't think so all right no we have name we have artist yeah so yeah, then that should be fine we can just add a little link in the chain here where we get our playlist. And now this is gonna break the typing that we used for the for set playlist because we're gonna be filtering it, but we're gonna say um, filtered and then we'll say playlist. Or no, it's not gonna be like that. It's gonna be... Uh, um so uh okay yeah just give me the name First name and then we can get the link would be playlist dot external i think it was dot spotify and i think there's spotify yeah and then we need the uh tracks and the tracks so we're gonna map through like the playlist dot tracks yes so um text group will also complain about the undefined because i think like everything in this uh schema can be undefined so uh, Got it. like later we also want to like uh make loser types for this playlist data items and then we want to map and for each track we want to return the name which is the track dot name wait did i lose my track types mm -hmm. oh no here it is track dot added at track dot name oh yeah here we go. Name. Okay. I'm going to rename this then to item so that it's not. Item, yeah. Okay. So we got our name. Make this bigger. We've got an artist. And this is the one where we're going to need to fetch the artist. Mm -hmm. So we will. Um, let's see. Const artist equals await fetch artist. And we'll get item track artist you with me still there you go yes artist <laughs> zero uh, dot id yep and then we should be able to do artist dot name i think yes and uh image will be artist dot Images, we'll just and go with zero dot. Yeah, the first one. So, I think it's just, yeah, yeah, we have just one of these. And then for the link, we want the item dot track dot external URLs, I bet, dot Spotify. And what are you mad about? Possibly undefined? Oh, yeah, this is undefined. Uh, and the items is possibly undefined. So, um, yeah, everything can be undefined in this uh, <laughs> in this response. So, uh, can I do one of those? We can also, yeah, That's not we can add some defaults. Yeah, maybe what we want to But do... I think like uh, it, it complains about the question marks. You can add question marks so that it defaults to undefined and it won't break, uh, uh, sure. like trying to access a property on an undefined object. Like these? Uh, yeah, uh, this also. And when we have the code, so for example, like the playlist in the line 69 can be undefined. So we also want a question mark there. Oh, I guess here. And also on the items. Okay, so then okay, you're yeah. not so mad. You will need to be a sync. 
Do I have to await all when I make this async? Uh, do, do you? Uh, yep, you're going to have to. So, yeah, I was thinking about it. Like, this is going uh, to be pretty complex. So maybe we can extract it to a function. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right. So um, this piece here, this all comes out. And we'll put it up here. Yeah. And say async function get artist details. Artist. Or I guess yeah. we'll uh, get playlist details. And that will be the playlist. And we've got one of these. Um, so then we want good. Mm -hmm. And you are going to be a playlist. Yep. And I'm going to spell function right. And then if you're still unhappy. Item dot track uh, yes. artists is of type unknown. So probably there is something missing in the uh, schema regarding the types, and TypeScript doesn't know what is the type of the artists. Okay. Uh, so, um, I and mean, th this is where I would just start doing, uh, yeah, the, 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 this is kind of where uh, I would start doing like a just a check, like if item mm -hmm, dot track yeah. dot artists dot length is less than one, then like just continue. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we could return. Yeah, but it's still something. gonna uh, it's still gonna comply uh, complain that uh, artist is of type unknown uh, because it may not be typed correctly in the uh, like it might be missing in the Spotify schema. So, oh, so maybe we um, just force it like uh, item dot track dot artists as. Um, yeah, now there is a question. Maybe here. we can actually go to the uh, to this. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we can go to this schema and see uh, why it doesn't work. Um, yeah, so maybe we can find uh, the, uh, play I guess the yeah. playlist. Playlists here. Yeah, and then we have parameters. And responses. then responses. We yeah, it returns something like one playlist. So we have to find it. Okay, here. Okay, yes. And then now we have to find the playlist object. Uh, okay, not this one. Here it is. Oh yeah, this one. And what do we have here? We have description. We have like basically everything that we saw be, uh, before uh, when we were uh, displaying the playlist. Yeah, and tracks. we have tracks. So that gives us a paging playlist track object. Yes. And that is circular. And yeah, so this is the the like this is the this is why we're having the issue like. Probably someone didn't like add it correctly to the uh, specification, and then we don't actually know what is this playlist track object type. So this is also why Feds can't infer it and uh, defaults to unknown because uh, well we don't know. Uh, Got it. Track gets a track object. Oh boy, this is a this is a rabbit hole, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So this is why, like, working with that is not like particularly pleasant. Like, if you were to just like look at this constantly to figure out how to use the API, right? Uh, that would be a lot of work, right? Yeah. I mean, it, honestly, this is the kind of stuff that usually keeps me from from dealing with it. Is I like just make it. Uh, I <laughs> I just like I give up. Like my brain just shuts down. I'm like, just any, it's fine. Um, so, artist is an array. 
of the artist yes. object. So the artist object then is here. Oh, yeah. Here it is. And it should have all of these pieces. So it's not unknown. So something is, hmm. So I might be like breaking mm -hmm. the, the reference here. Is or maybe uh, that track. Uh, or maybe maybe there, there's an issue that Fetz is losing this type at some point. But that's okay. We can work with that. Uh, so basically, like let's say that we want to make sure that uh, this item dot is an array, so we can use array is array. Okay. Uh, so we we want to do. Like array is array item dot track dot artists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I guess we probably want to like do that negative. Um, then we can return false, and then oh, it hates all of this. I can't return false because I said that it was going to get back a playlist thing. Uh, also, this is mad. Be nice. Oh, yeah. To me. So, Jeez. here, uh, yeah, we also have to put the question mark. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so that part's fine. So, maybe if uh, tracks, uh, and then we can also, yes. so we get our artist, and then we could do a, like the same check here. And say uh, artist dot images, and then will you leave me alone? Yes, haha! <laughs> I have defeated you, TypeScript. Okay. Script. Okay. <laughs> um, so then, that should give us all of these, and we can return filtered. The uh, filtered data. Yep. Okay. So this is our get playlist details. Um, mm -hmm. that will be called here. Mm -hmm. So we yep. can just get playlist details. And then this should give us back our filtered playlist, which gets set here, which is unhappy because that is the wrong thing. Not a but playlist we, anymore. We need to we have uh, this type. Up to where's our other type? Yeah, here it is. Okay, and then this is instead going to be playlist data, which theoretically works. No, uh, type tracks is yeah. I think this is because we in tracks will return something uh, else. I think we'll return this false. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, so then we need to. Uh, filter Boolean, and that should solve that. Uh, yeah, I don't think it will narrow properly because it will like um, it will filter at the runtime, but it won't narrow at the TypeScript level. So maybe oh. let's um, let's return undefined instead of false. And then we can also say that tracks can be um, like the track of undi or undefined in our type. And it looks like we are allowing that. And now it's happy again. Okay. Yeah. Now it's unhappy again. Yeah, because uh, right now we are allowing that the whole tracks can be undefined. And we want to say that tracks can be either an object or undefined. It is. Yes. That is that is what is happening, and also this is returning promises, which means I need mm -hmm. to get this whole chunk out of here, and we're going to say uh, filtered tracks equals await, and then we will put the filtered tracks in here. Okay. 
Are you happy now? You are happy now. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, Always good to lose a wrestling match with TypeScript. Um, what are you mad about now? Uh, so this is not a promise anymore. I yeah. So, so, so the, the, the thing is that, um, I think this is the same thing that I mentioned before that we now have, uh, oh yeah. So the track can be either undefined or the data mm -hmm. and, uh, actually as someone is pointing in the comments, it's an array of promises. So, it uh, Oh, 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 yeah, okay. That's, so I was on the right track and I just forgot to, like, do the rest of it. Now we get a bunch of threats. No overload matches this call. This is a... Uh... Why doesn't that work? Now what am I doing? Is that no? No, I think uh, I think you have to add the uh, or array earlier, like um, even earlier. I think uh, like here. Because... Oh boy! Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we we. Uh... Okay. Okay, so we have the the playlist and we are mapping playlist tracks items return undefined. How about that? Yep. And now we also don't want to return undefined like inside of this promise. So if we add the or empty array after the map, so um, uh, the if you array. scroll below. So this is my after the map. Yeah, and now we also have this undefined problem. You can't be. That... It, yeah, because we only. Uh... There we go. Yeah, Sheesh. it's fine. Just leave me alone, TypeScript. I'm trying to write code. And now you're unhappy because undefined is not. It's not, yes. Do I need to mark this as, let's see, you're going to return playlist data and that should line it up. Yeah, and then you're, uh, after you added that, this uh, this type, you can see that this return filtered uh, is highlighted because, yeah, we return undefined here. So I would, uh, like, instead of adding this, uh, this playlist data as the return type, we can let TypeScript infer that itself. And inside of the use effect we can say that if the data came undefined then just skip or something like that so like if the uh, basically if playlist is undefined then do whatever um, yeah. okay now will you please let me play why uh, tracks are incompatible because uh yeah because we have uh the array of track or undefined so we can modify the type slightly it's uh, not an issue so we can uh, uh let's wrap it in uh params the the tracks object like this uh, uh, before the uh before the square brackets so just the uh, just the object. Okay. Yeah, and let's uh, no like the the regular params like the you know like you have the function. <laughs> uh, 
uh, oh yeah and then after the uh, the 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 object bracket let's do or undefined uh but we do yeah like the the single one uh because we are in the type word yep okay okay you please please work okay so then we have a simplified Ah, <laughs> we did it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now yes. we have our playlist. It took us a while, but <laughs> we did. I still think it took us less time than it would have taken us had we tried to write this from scratch. So we yes. can do one of these and say like href equals uh, playlist dot link. And we'll say uh, listen on Spotify. Right. Okay. So we're getting close. And then to we'll leave out the iframe because that actually we didn't see that link and yep. then we can um, set up a list like this and for each of these and we, the list of tracks yeah so we'll do um, playlist dot tracks dot map and we get our track and then we will return this and we're in React, so we need a key. The key can be the link, because that should be unique. And then we'll have the, uh, uh, what do we want to do? We can do. Oh, yeah. Also, the track can be undefined. So, uh, yeah, so if there's no track, we can just skip. Yep. OK. So we'll say um, track.link and we'll do the track.name by track.artist. Artist. Okay. And why don't we put the image up above that? So we'll do an R image source. It's going to be track.image. And the alt will be track dot or track dot artist. Okay. Yep. And if we did that right, oh. look at it go. Okay, so then we can do um, the tiniest bit of like maybe we can bring back the CSS file <laughs> and yeah. to, you know so I fix think itself. Let's do uh, let's do the UL as display. Uh, flex, and then we'll do the li as a uh, width like one fifty ish, um, and then we can set the images to be display block and width one hundred percent. And then if I re-import this, yeah, wait. Uh, I think it worked out of the box because it's also imported in this main TSX. Oh, I think okay. that's the correct like entry point in V. Got it. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I guess. Make it wrap. That was weird. That was weird. It was like that was like it it caught it in a weird way, and then decided that like actually just kidding. I didn't want you to do that. Or I. Broke it? Uh, I think... That's not correct. I think that's because it's very uh, narrowed. And like if we wrap, then it's going to take like the whole space, like each image. Maybe we can set like a um, max width for the images yeah you're you're right um flex wrap should be wrap and then the mm -hmm. images these i th oh uh, the my oh my yeah. size i screwed up on okay that makes sense okay so then we can take yeah we'll need to work on accessibility but <laughs> it's better <laughs> Okay, and then we can set a gap of like one rem. Uh, we can do a list style 
of none and um, padding of zero. And then we make this an actual size. And I mean, this is like, it's not, this is not perfect. And, and the colors are definitely a little wackadoo, mm -hmm. but, but this is okay. Yeah. And now we've got a kind of a, like a playlist thing, which is, which is pretty cool. And we built that, you know, I would say we spent more time wrestling with TypeScript, which yeah. I, I feel yeah. like is uh, kind of the yeah. universal case. Um, yeah, I think we, we wrote all the pets related code in like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then we spend the rest uh, figuring things out here. Yeah. And this is the, the this is just like this is very it's it's very like a breath of fresh air to be able to kind of take the thinking about data out of the way mm -hmm. and just be able to pull these things in. Like it's just, it just feels nice. Right. And, um, yeah. So going back through this, just to, to recap, since I think we did a lot of, of like mental gymnastics around making TypeScript stop complaining. Um, we were able to set up this client. So we've got our, our FETS mm -hmm. client, which just grabs the, the Spotify open API spec. We specify the endpoint and then we create this client. Mm -hmm. And then we we had, by importing this client and a couple helper types, we can fetch all of our artist data. All of this was auto-completed for us. Mm -hmm. We were able to get our playlists. All of this was auto-completed for us. And then um, even with the the pretty custom, like, trimming down this, this data, we still, we end up, because we did the the hurdle jumping of uh, figuring out how to get these to stop yelling at us, we still get autocomplete all the way down. Like that is mm -hmm. oof, just good. That is really good. Yeah, so we, we started like this this stream by mentioning TRPC. And I feel like uh, like what TRPC is doing like really well, it's like, you know, you don't have to think about this data. You don't have to think about fetching about this APA layer. You just can like ship your code. And I feel like there was something missing like that in the world of rest. Mm. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this is really good stuff. So for somebody who wants to keep going on this and, and learn more, where mm. where should they go to keep learning? Uh, so they should definitely see the documentation. Uh, so yeah, if you can open it, yeah, here's the whole documentation for the client. Like there are a bunch of things we didn't cover. Like there are plugins, uh, there are middlewares, uh, that, uh, you can also use, um, there are some other like helper utilities. Like we use this, uh, OAS output. Mm -hmm. So there are also mm -hmm. like some utilities to get like the, the models from the open API schema and so on so i think this is a, a a good starting point and like uh it's it's obviously open source of so if someone has like any any issues with using it or suggestions how it can be improved then definitely uh they can reach out on github create an issue or maybe even directly to to me or to arda and uh yeah so here's the repository and uh, well, that we've discussed a bunch uh, about the client, but also if someone is interested about like in in building uh, REST APIs in TypeScript, then I, I definitely recommend checking out the documentation for the server. So uh -huh. it's uh, under the same URL. Yeah, uh, we have the server part. Very very cool, um, and. You can always reach out to Alexander directly on Twitter. Yep. Um, My DMs are open. And and we figured out the part where DM it, the there was the bug where DMs got like half closed on Twitter. And I think yeah. we've all figured that out at this point. <laughs> but yeah, so if you try <laughs> Yeah, the DM, yeah. I, I I saw a tweet mentioning that, so I turned it on or off. Like I turned my direct messages on again. So yeah, now everybody can reach out to me. <laughs> well, this was so much fun. I I really appreciate you taking the time. This was uh, this was a blast. And uh, folks, make sure you go and check out all this stuff. Just go give it a try. 
Uh, we have a lot of great stuff coming up on the show. So first and foremost, this episode, like every episode, was live captioned. We've had Amanda here with us all day from Wyco Captioning. Thank you so much. And that's made possible by Netlify and Vetsu Code, who sponsor the show to keep it more accessible and to allow all these other great things to happen. Um, while you're checking out things, make sure you go and look at the schedule. We have uh, Jess Sachs coming on next week, and we're going to talk about Faker JS. I'm very, very excited about that. I've also booked, like, Yuna's coming on the show. Adam Argyle's coming on the show. Uh, I, I was talking to Adi Osmani about coming on the show. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great fall, right? Like, so just, uh, so so hang out. Make sure you, you know, join the Discord. Uh, mark your calendars, all those things, so that we can continue to hang out. I uh, I would... I would love that. It would make me very happy. With that, Alexandra, anything you want to say before we wrap this one up? Uh, well, I want to all again to to uh, like I recommend checking out Fats and uh, then reaching out to me to to tell me what you think about it. And also, thank you very much, Jason, for having me here. Uh, as I mentioned before, it was my dream to <laughs> come join you uh, on this live stream. So I'm I'm really happy that we get to talk about pets and build something fun. It was an absolute blast. And thank you for coaching me through all of those TypeScript gymnastics. Thanks, y'all, for hanging out. We're going to go find somebody to raid, and we will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>